Greetings, beautiful people. Welcome again to the Novice Kitchen. If this is your first time here, the warmest welcome to you. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll decide to join this beautiful and growing family. Thank you. Now, what do we have on the menu? We have trophy, which is fried turkey tail. I have included some turkey wings in there as well. This is a Ghanaian favorite. It's usually served with banku or kinky fried yam. Back when I was going to Atimota school, there was a woman behind the cafeteria who sold it with kinky, and my goodness, it was so good. Today, I'm going to make the same thing. Now, we're going to take the flavors a few notches up by courtesy of our sister, Original Mama Betty. Yes, Original Mama Betty is a Ghanaian sister who has a channel, a beautiful channel on this platform. And I'd like you to take a moment and go and check her out and show her lots of love. She generously and graciously sent me a package containing her spice mixes. And that's how we're going to really pack flavor into this trophy today. I can't wait to get started. Let's wash our hands. turkey tails now it is very important to note that the largest feathers on the bird are actually in the tail so there are these pockets that contain the feathers like right here that would need to be pulled out just like that with a kitchen tweezer it should come out fairly easily you might find some of that also on the wings and so once I remove them and you can also use a knife to do that no problem the next step is to trim some of the fat off because it's the tail there is a lot of fat and dark meat stored there so with a sharpened kitchen knife I proceed to trim a lot of that fat off just like that keep in mind friends also that there are always going to be those finer hairs or feathers left on the tail or the bird okay so by trimming the fat off you'll also be able to remove those if they are present and then i proceed by making these incisions these little slots it helps it to really fry crunchy uh, especially the rest of the fat that's left on there and you all know when you fry fat oh it's like bacon it really maximizes the flavor. So you render the fat off and you get more flavor. Win-win situation, as I always say. And it fries really beautifully with those slots. Now I do also have some wings in here as well. And the wings have already been cut into my preferred sizes and cleaned by the butcher so it is not as high maintenance. We don't need to do much to it. And I proceed to rinse uh, them one more time and we'll be ready to really start layering the flavors. All right, so our turkey pieces are ready. They are cleaned and ready to go. I have my ginger. Ginger is very necessary when you're preparing poultry. I also have some onions. We're going to create our marinade now. I have three onions. We don't need a lot here. I also have my scallions. I really love the grassy note that it brings, that mild oniony grassy note that it brings to the table. And I have four cloves of garlic. So these will be my fresh aromatics. So let's proceed. Next step is to blend our fresh aromatics in combination with the spices that we have chosen for this recipe today. Now for the spices, we're going to begin with our red chili flakes, okay? I'm using chili flakes today because it brings a depth of flavor. Because it's dry, it brings a, you know, a very interesting dimension to our flavors, all right? And I like my heat, you all already know, so I use spoon and a half. I also have my chicken seasoning. Now this is homemade, it has great flavors and it's really going to bring the umami to the plate all right so that also goes in and you can substitute with chicken bouillon next we're going to pick which of original mama betty's 
spice mixes that we're going to be using. Now, because I'm, I'm cooking a bird, I decided to use the chicken. The chicken one. It's gonna be so good. Good stuff, original Mama Betty. This is this is beautiful, amazing. I am blown away. Wow. Mmm. I'm going to use a whole tablespoon. Mmm. Wow. Yeah. And let's not forget to add some salt. It is a marinade after all. Right? Now I'm going to add some olive oil to move the blades of the blender. I really do not want to dilute these great flavors, so the oil is going to help us maintain the flavors. Now this spice mix from Original Mama Betty is everything. You need to get your hands on her spice mixes. Wow. I cannot get over how delicious this is gonna be. Let's blend our marinade. Now the original Mama Betsy spices are all natural, no additives or artificial ingredients, no salt added either. And she has a variety of them. She even has one for Kele Wele. Now I have linked her channel in the description box for right, your convenience. So our gorgeous marinade now gets to be put onto the meat. Friends, I know you love and you see where I'm going with this. So if you are on the same page as me, please give me a thumbs up right now to encourage your sister here. Thank you. All right, now let's mix it in. Let's make sure that all the meat pieces are coated evenly. I really wish you were here to, to just smell it. Very aromatic. Wow, original Mama Betsy, this is extremely impressive. I am blown away, literally. So now that our turkey is well coated evenly throughout with our beautiful marinade, I'm going to cover the pot and just set it aside for about 20 minutes so that it has a chance to soak in all those amazing flavors. And then we'll proceed to cook. In the meantime, I have a lot of mess I need to clean up, so I'll get working on that. All right, beautiful people, so my work area is clean. All the mess is gone, we are ready to cook this. It's been sitting here for just 20 minutes, so all of the flavors have penetrated the muscle of the meat, and it's going to be so good. So let's set it on the stove. We're gonna cook on medium heat. For approximately 35 to 45 minutes, or until the meat is cooked through. Not too tender because we're gonna cook it a second time by frying it until crunchy and most of the fat rendered off and the flavors are like top notch maximized. So there it is, it's been about 40 minutes into the cooking. I go in and I stir it. Because I'm using a cast iron pot, the heat gets distributed evenly and it cooks very thoroughly throughout without me going have, having to go back in and stirring it periodically. Once it's done cooking, I separate the meat pieces from the broth. And then the next step is to fry. Obviously, the broth is gonna get put into the refrigerator because I can use it for other recipes, savory recipes. So this broth right here, there's a lot of fat on it as well. So once I put it in the refrigerator, this, the fat is going to solidify. The broth will kind of separate and settle on the bottom. So when I'm ready to use it, I just lift that fat right off and I have nothing but broth. So now I have my oil for deep frying in another cast iron wok and it's going to fry it so can't you just keep watching and you'll see it is going to be so beautiful. 
and my goodness this this dish right here you have to try it it is one of those must tries it was absolutely gorgeous in taste in appearance it just appeals to all the senses there are just take a look as it transforms into these beauties right here what is crunchiness wow yes now please fry to your preferred crunchiness all right you want the skin and the outer layer to be really crunchy leaving the inside nice and moist and juicy look at that that color to me is perfect so if you like to fry it longer or shorter it's really up to you um, those slots that we made too really causes the the fat like i stated before to be rendered off so the remainder of the fat especially in the tail get rendered off not only that they also create sort of an aesthetic um, so when you take a look at one fry tail it looks almost like flower petals right there almost like a design it's very pretty so it's great for presentation as well yes so I'm just gonna continue frying until all of the batch is fried. I did make a big batch. We don't eat this much often, maybe once a year if that um, in this household. But when we do, I go all the way, yes. <laughs> I don't skimp at all. So we're done. And I'm going to serve it today with kinky, which is a fermented corn, almost like a dumpling. So it's steamed until it's soft and pliable. Oh, it is enjoyable with this trophy. You can also have it with very soft banku. Oh my goodness. Now I have sliced thinly some onions as well as some red and green tomatoes. Yes, and some scallions. So that's what I am dishing right now. And then I also have this sauce. It's a fresh green chili or pakpochetto sauce. Oh, what a combination. So mouth-watering. Oh my gosh. Yes. My family could not stop rattling over this. Yes. And I also have Nanabe's kitchen shit. So, so I drizzle a little bit of that chili oil onto my fresh vegetables. And then I lay the actual chili sauce next to it. Perfect combination. All you need is a refreshing drink. Yes, a drink that is chilled with some ice. Wash it down. Take another look right now. You see almost like two milliliters of crunchy outer layer, leaving the inner portion nice and moist and juicy. And that kinky was so soft. Wow. It was so soft and pliable. The perfect accompaniment. Now this meat right here. This is one of those must try recipes, friends. You have to try it. I got my turkey tail pieces and the wings from an oriental grocery store called Lily's here in Arizona in Chandler. So if you're in this area, please check them out. You will find so many ingredients, including momone. <laughs> yes, they have momone there. They have a lot of ingredients that are very similar to what we use in Africa, especially West Africa. Friends, I thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you're giving me a thumbs up because I know you enjoyed this video. And make it a great day. And as always, have fun, especially in that kitchen.